The first thing I want to do is get going on my bent lamination because that's going to be what I think is going to be the trickiest part of this build because I've never done it before. So I'm going to have to just learn this as I go and that's really exciting to me. I'm really been like, I've been barely able to sleep because I'm so excited to get this form made today and to get this process going because I've never done it before. What we're looking at here is this shape, this negative spot is going to be where our slats go for the actual body of this cabinet. And this is a 5 8 gap. So we have this form and I made this three inches wide so I had enough strength here for the clamp action. I didn't want this to bend or flex on me so I made it three inches. I think that's strong enough. It's five and three quarters of an inch thick. So it's eight layers of three quarter inch ply. And that's because I wanted to have my piece be five inches deep. And you need to have this gap here that's gonna be equal to the thickness of your material when you glue it all together. We're gonna get this going. I'm gonna start cutting some strips, get this all glued up. And then these are gonna be pressed together. And hopefully I'll have a piece of wood or eight pieces or five pieces of wood that will be this shape when we're done. clamps and this is a really cool process like I got a big smile on my face because this is super fun like I like I said earlier I've been up all day thinking about how to do this and it worked uh, but it didn't work exactly how I thought it was gonna work so let's talk about that real quick I thought we could do five eighth inch layers to get to five eighths those weren't gonna bend in fact we tried one and it broke so that wasn't gonna work out so we ended up doing nine layers to get up to 0.625 or five eighths and I don't remember how thick that is but it's 0.625 divided by nine, and that's how thin those are. So um, I used a product called Unibond to glue this all together, and I used a very large glue roller, which you saw in the footage, but it honestly came together really nice. Once the glue got onto the wood, it sort of helped lubricate it a little bit and helped it slide in. I was able to pull it together, and it just kind of went really smooth. The next new thing that I've never done before is veneering. So I bought a big veneer or vacuum press system. I got this big old bag and a vacuum press system, and I've never been able to use it until now. That was kind of the whole reason for this whole project is I wanted to try two new things. So we got our platen set up. Um, I won't deep dive into what the vacuum press does, except to say that this sucks all the air out of this, and it's a fully enclosed system, and the actual bag presses down on there. It uses vacuum force to press down on it and clamps evenly across the whole surface. <laughs> All right, so I'm back and working on this project and I'm really excited about it. Last time we were filming, I was putting this in the bag and as you can see, <laughs> it didn't turn out very well. There's a lot of wrinkles and parts where the glue squeezed through. What happened was, this is a commercially sourced veneer that I got my hands on and it's very thin. It's also very old, it's very brittle and it's just kind of moving all over the place. What I didn't know is because this is one of my first pieces of veneer that I've ever thrown in my bag, was that there's a product called Veneer Tamer. There's some other products like it. Um, I, they do the same thing. They're just under different names. Basically, you soak this pro uh, the material with this product and it helps make it more supple and more pliable and you don't get this result. This is the same piece of wood just farther down the strip with the Veneer Tamer on it and it came out like dead flat. It's really nice. This stuff works really good. I was worried about pullback or spring back or any of that. And it's, this has been sitting here for about three weeks now and it looks perfect. 
So this is a commercially sourced veneer and this is a shop sawn veneer. It's thicker. It's a little over a 16th of an inch thick off each, each side. It's just adhered to a substrate, which is a five mil ply. And this will be our panel for our door. And this will be our panel for the back of our cabinet. The next step is to make this all square and nice because right now it looks terrible. So I'm going to take this over to the jointer. I'm going to joint one side. It's kind of sketchy, but it's really not. It looks sketchier than it is. Um, I'm going to take it from the jointer over to the table saw and I'm going to cut the other side so they're in a parallel line. Uh, it's the same milling process you would do with traditional lumber. Uh, it just seems a little scarier than it is. I will say that cutting it on the table saw does feel pretty sketchy, but when you're looking at it, you're like, eh, it's just like cutting a normal piece of wood. So let's get this thing jointed and make it look real nice. I just milled and cut up these three pieces. These are gonna be the bottom, and then there's gonna be a little separator, and then a shelf that's gonna be adjustable in here. The joinery for this is gonna be a box joint, which looks really cool in my opinion, and then a mortise, a stop mortise and tenon in here, and then this is just gonna be an adjustable shelf. So this will be uh, just a little bit narrower than the width of the cabinet. So next, we're gonna jump over to the joinery, which is the fun part. So I'm gonna go take this over to the pan router, get the box joints going, and then I'll show you how I'm gonna do the mortise and tenon for this because it's a cool little jig. Everything's in clamps and the cabinet looks great. I mean, this is really coming together fast. I love these plies on here. I think it looks really cool. It's like super fancy walnut ply. I don't know, it looks really great though. This all came together nice. Dimensions are good. Everything's in clamps. Everything went together smooth. That was really nice. Did a mortise and tenon here, did finger joints here. The other thing we gotta do to the carcass is put pins in here for this third shelf technically. But now what we're gonna do is jump onto the door. So that's what we're gonna get going on next. I gotta mill up some wood cut up the panel and get this whole thing. It's kind of a complicated door actually, because the door is gonna fit inset to this opening, which means that the top rail is gonna be an arch. <laughs>
finished up, we can start working on the back now. And the back is gonna get this panel into it. So if you notice here, this shelf is inset almost exactly to the thickness of this panel. So to get this to fit in, we're gonna run a rabbit around the entire perimeter of this whole cabinet. I am gonna have an issue because I'm gonna do it on the router table and that's gonna have a bearing and a bit and that's gonna make a round corner. So I'll just have to clean that up with a chisel. Also the bearing's gonna hit this shelf and I'll have to clean that up with a chisel too. So I'll get to do some real woodwork, which will be great for a change. With everything else made, it's time to work on the final touches. And I wanted to have a lot of brass on this thing because it's walnut. Walnut and brass look really great together. I got these butt hinges, these are from Brusso. But I wanted to make my own poles for this because I had a design in my head. I didn't see it anywhere. And even if I did, I still wanted to make it myself. So I bought some brass and I'm gonna start cutting those poles out right now. And by poles, I mean one pole because it's getting one pole. For the poles, I'm gonna be making a rectangle with a semicircle. Uh, it'll make more sense when you see it, but I'm gonna be using the Shaper Origin to cut that out. So I'm gonna attach this brass to the workstation with some double-sided tape, and I'm using an eighth-inch O-flute upcut bit, which is really good for brass. For the hinges, I made this jig. This will just reference the front of the carcass, and I'll make the mortise here and this mortise here, and I'll be able to use the same template on the door to cut the mortises for that.